In this lesson, we're going to talk about translated parabolas. So let's just review what we've learned about parabolas and then go into the translations. So recall that uh, there are four different orientations of the parabola. One is when the parabola is facing up, y is equal to x squared. The other one is when the parabola is facing down, that's y is equal to negative x squared or negative y is equal to x squared. And in both of these cases, the axis of symmetry is going to be vertical. That's running vertically up and down through the center of the parabola, or through the vertex. The other cases were, are when x is equal to y squared, so the squared value is on the y, and that's the case where the parabola opens to the right, or when x is equal to negative y squared, or negative x is equal to y squared, and the parabola opens to the left. In this case, the axis of symmetry is going to be horizontal, and the axis of symmetry will run right through the vertex again. So when the y value is squared, the axis of symmetry is horizontal. When the x value is, uh, is squared, the axis of symmetry is vertical. So let's talk about translated parabolas. And what a translated parabola means is that the vertex is shifted off of the origin. Remember also that we learned that the equation for the determining the focus with the vertex at the origin was 4PY is equal to X squared, where P was the value or the distance from the vertex along the axis of symmetry to the focus. Now we're going to add some components to the translated parabola formula or equation. Now it's going to be 4P times Y minus K is equal to X minus H squared. So again, recall that when the value of X is squared, the axis of symmetry is going to be vertical. So in this case, we have a vertical axis of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry is just the value or the variable which is being squared is equal to h. Now, what is h and what is k? h and k are just the x and y coordinates, respectively, for the vertex of the parabola. Regardless of the orientation of the parabola, the vertex will always be at h and k. So in this case, we have a vertical axis of symmetry the squared value is going to be the x, or the squared variable is going to be x. So my axis of symmetry runs through the vertex at that x coordinate. So x is equal to h will be the axis of symmetry. So let's take a problem and write an equation with an, uh, a vertex of 3, negative 3. So all we do, and we're going to do this irrespective of the p-value, I write in 4p y minus a minus 3 because the k-value is at negative 3, so that would be y plus 3, is equal to x minus, I have a value of 3 here for x, x minus 3 squared. So there's your e equation for a translated parabola irrespective of the p-value. Now let's also take a look at what happens when the orientation of the parabola is right or left. So now we know the axis of symmetry is going to be horizontal. So the axis of symmetry is horizontal. And in this case, the axis of symmetry now is going to be equal to the y coordinate for the vertex. So y is equal to k is your axis of symmetry. And this makes sense because the axis of symmetry goes right through the vertex, again, at the hk value. But I'm creating a line in which y is equal to some value irrespective of x. So in this case, y is equal to k is the axis of symmetry. So let's take a problem where we determine that the hk value is negative 4, negative 2. So again, irrespective of the p value, I have 4p x minus a minus 4, which is plus 4 is equal to y minus or minus 2, which is plus 2 squared. Now notice that the h value is always associated with the x 
and the k value always associated with y, regardless of whether or not the orientation of the parabola is right or left or up or down. So you can see the vertical axis of symmetry, h is associated with x, and k is associated with y, and also in an axis of symmetry in which it's horizontal, again, h associated with x, k associated with y. All right, so let's take an example uh, of a problem 24, y minus 3 is equal to x plus 4 squared. And let's walk the problem through uh, to determine the vertex, axis of symmetry, focus, and directrix. So first we want to understand uh, what formula we're dealing with. And we can see that it's going to be, since we have the x squared value here, it's going to be 4p times y minus k is equal to x minus h squared. Once we have this formula, everything will flow through fairly seamlessly. So let's talk about the vertex. In this case, we know the vertex is going to be hk. So we know the values of h that make this statement true are going to be negative 4. And the value of k that makes this statement true here is going to be 3. So we just found a vertex at negative 4, 3. Now the next step is to find our axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry, and now I've just I've created a parabola at negative 4, 3. Our axis of symmetry runs right through the vertex. So in this case, if it's vertical, the value for, uh, or the equation for the axis of symmetry is going to start with x. Another way to remember this is that you can determine the vi variable with a v uh, the squared value. In this case, the variable with a squared value is going to be x. So your equation will start with x. This next step is to determine the h or k value associated with the variable with the squared value. So what is the h value associated with uh, the x? That's going to be negative 4. And then the final step is just to make step 1 equal to step 2. x is equal to negative 4. And this is your equation for the axis of symmetry. And as we look, this makes sense. The red line represents the axis of symmetry. It runs right through the vertex and through uh, the negative 4 component for x. Our third step is going to be to determine the focus. Well, what is the focus? The focus is that point that's equidistant from the parabola and from the directrix. So the directrix to the parabola and the focus to the parabola will be the same distance. When we determine the p-value, the p-value is just the distance from the vertex to the focus along the axis of symmetry. So again, we have our equation 24y minus 3 is equal to x plus 4 squared. We determine the p-value by equating, remember, our equation of 4p from the prior slide. 4p, y minus k is equal to x minus h squared. So we take 4p from the formula. And we determine that p is equal to 6. That's the first step. Now the next step is to determine where the focus is. Now p is not necessarily the focus. P is just the distance from the vertex along the axis of symmetry to the focus and also to the directrix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add p units along the axis of symmetry from negative uh, 4, 3. And that's going to be 6 units. So I'm actually just adding 6 y units up the axis of symmetry. So now this point here, the x coordinate remains the same as negative 4. But now, after I've added 6 to 3, my y coordinate now becomes 9. So my focus is going to be negative 4, 9. Now my last step is to determine my directrix. So the first thing we did was we determined the coordinate for the focus, or I'm sorry, for the vertex. And that was at negative 4, 3. Then we identified our p-value of 6. We identified our focus as being the coordinate negative 4, 9 after we added the p-value of 6 to the y-coordinate of 3. And now we're going to move in the opposite direction. The opposite direction would be outside of the parabola. So for the focus, the focus is inside of the parabola. The directrix in, in this case is going to be outside of the parabola. So 
similar to what we did with the focus, instead of, however, moving six units up, we're now going to move six units down from the vertex. So I have negative, or three is my vertex along the axis of symmetry as the y value. I subtract six, or I move six units down. Now negative three is going to be, negative three is going to be my y coordinate for the directrix. Now I know the directrix is going to run perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. It's going to run right through this line. So I can now say that the directrix is going to be equal to y is equal to negative 3. Now if I were to take this step here, all I'm doing along the axis of symmetry, I'm moving p units away from the vertex outside of the parabola, and I'm identifying that point. And that's the point of intersection between the axis of symmetry and the directrix. And that's, again, negative 4, negative 3.